The name's Robin. No first name, just Robin. Would you like a martini? Hi guys, I'm Jason M and I like to read comic books. That's why this week I decided to review Grayson Number no. 1 from DC Comics. But before I get that, don't forget to go to Majorspoilers.com, the comic book website where they know that you love comic books, and we do too. And if you know about Loot Crate, you can go to LootCrate.com slash Jawa and get 10% off this cool box of geeky gear. Sometimes you get a t-shirt, sometimes you get a pop vinyl. Go subscribe! And now let's talk about some Dick Grayson. Grayson number one by Tim Seeley, Tom King, and Mikhail Janin. So very recently in the DC Universe, Forever Evil happened. If you don't know what Forever Evil is, it's this weird storyline where, well, it was not really weird, but where the crime syndicate came from Earth-3, they kidnapped Dick Grayson, and they decided to willy-nilly reveal his identity to the, to the world. He was hooked up to something called the Murder Machine, and his fake died, and then real died, and then fake died, and then now the whole world thinks that he's actually fake dead, because Batman wants him to be fake dead. And after 10 pages of the final Nightwing issue, where Batman and Nightwing just punched each other with their shirts off and created all kinds of very interesting uh, sexual issues. Now Grayson's on his own. Dick Grayson is now an agent of Spiral, a secret agent society that was created by Grant Morrison during Batman Incorporated. So what does this mean? What does this mean for Dick Grayson? Well, first off, I will tell you this from reading this issue. Dick Grayson's character has always been about getting away from Batman's shadow, standing apart from Batman's shadow. He was the first Robin, he was the first disciple of the Bat, and so he has always tried to get outside of the shadow. I think that's why, instead of like becoming Red Robin or another Robin or the Red Hood, he became Nightwing, a name that was that comes from Superman, a name that has nothing to do with Batman. And he moved to Bloodhaven and went to a town that had nothing to do with Batman. Whereas most of the other Robins just you know, basically kind of stay in Gotham City, except for that time the Red Hood sometimes goes to the Saturn with Starfire. It's just weird or whatever. But Dick Grayson has always been about new things. And this issue definitely does go on the new side of things. So the basic part of this issue is that Grayson starts out with blonde hair and he's on a train. And yeah, I know first off you're like, oh, blonde hair, but don't worry. It's a wig. And he's teamed up with the New 52 version of Helena Bertinelli. Now, in the old days, Helena Bertinelli was the Huntress. But now that we're in the New 52, Helena Bertinelli's Helena Wayne is the Huntress. And she's from Earth 2. They're on a train. They're trying to get a Russian man named Ninel. I don't know if that's how you say it, but that's how I'm going to go. I'm going to say it. Ninel. And after some acrobatics to get uh, Ninel off the train, finding another agent, Nightwing, or I want to call him Nightwing, Grayson, Agent Grayson, or his Agent 37, as he's called in this book, is attacked by Midnighter. Midnighter and him have a fight. Niddle, you find out, has superpowers and attacks Midnighter, and eventually Dick Grayson gets him out of the building, takes him home to Spiral. The Spiral bosses are like, good job, Agent 37, good job, ha ha ha. Go flirt with our secretary, Money Penny. And then we get the reveal that Spiral is actually trying to find out all the superhero secret identities. That's their mission, that's their goal, which is kind of a weird mission. First off, let's like talk about the good of this issue. The art by Mikhail Janin is stellar. It is great, it is perfect. The way he draws faces, the way he draws action, Dick always seems like he's moving from panel to panel to panel. This book seems like the flow of water almost, like that there's constant movement. And that is great. That is a testament to this book. It seems acrobatic. Even though Dick Grayson is a spy, we get plenty of his acrobatic circus nature. And his spy costume with the little things and, and the little carabiner here, it actually in this issue does look like a carabiner. Whereas in the pre Preview issues, it always looked like a big G, and you were like, oh god, this guy's trying to fake his death from the world, and he wears a big G on his chest? That seems pretty stupid. Another thing that's great is that the, this story is actually really good, and this is the most Dick Grayson-like that Dick Grayson has acted in the New 52. I've had a lot of problems with the Nightwing title in the New 52. It's been okay, and that's about it. It's just been okay. And Dick really had no purpose. Even him being in Gotham and working for Haley Circus, it didn't serve any purpose to his character because Dick has always been about his own man. The only time that he wasn't was when Grant Morrison made him Batman, but there was a purpose because he needed to fill that role. Dick needs a purpose or, or something to make him different from Bruce. And this is definitely filling that. I think him being a secret agent is something new, is something original, which is really what the New 52 is supposed to be about. New and original, right? And this could finally be that thing for Dick Grayson. Now let's talk about the bad of the issue. Majority of the issue is on this train. We're trying to get Niddle, this man who has superpowers, off the train. We get him off the train, we fight Midnighter, and then we just take him home. And why? It's never explained. It is never explained why we're so... The, the entire issue is about getting Nettle, this man with superpowers, off this train. We get him off the train, no ha nothing, nothing happens. 
Why did we want to get him off the train? Ah, who knows? We story. Ha ha. Comic books. Woo. You know, it's never explained, and, and it especially doesn't make sense with the overall storyline. Especially since we learned that Spiral is all about getting superhero secret identities. Like they know Batman's identity. They know Cyborg's. They're looking into the Flash. They're gonna figure out Barry Allen pretty soon. How does Nettle fit, fit into that? Doesn't make sense. And why does Midnighter care about Nettle too? Like Midnighter shows up and he fights Dick, but it didn't ever explain why he fights Dick. And also, let's go into a little bit of the Spiral. So. Spiral wants to find all of the superhero identities. Why? What purpose does it serve? Do they want transparency? Is that the reason why? Do they feel that people with power must be subject to the public? It's never quite explained. I wonder if they're going to do something like Prometheus. Back in the old JLA days of Grant Morrison, Prometheus was a character who was the anti-Batman, but his parents had been killed by like superheroes, so he was totally against anything justice. Um, is, are we going to learn that the head of Spiral is the same way, that his parents were killed by superheroes and that he's totally like, they gotta be unmasked because we don't like masks, which is funny because he has like a little mask plate on his face as well, which is a little bit hypocritical. Overall, this is a very fun Dick Grayson book and is a breath of fresh air, especially after the last issue of Nightwing, which is written by the same writer, which seems impossible to mind because that whole last issue was Woo. But this issue is so good. It's a breath of fresh air. It's fun. The art is great. Dick's having fun. He's flying around. He's, you know, probably going to kiss Helena Bertinelli and do a little bit more, if you know what I'm saying. Also, some funny notes. Uh, he contacts Batman during the issue, and Batman's code name is Matches, which is a Matches Malone reference, if you know. And also, this has one of the best opening pages of a DC comic book I've seen in a long time. Dick falling through all the moments of his career. Loved it, loved it, loved it. If you have any interest in Dick Grayson, this is book is definitely a buy it. That's it for my review of Grayson number one. If you wanted to know some other books that I like this week, I really enjoyed The Life After number one by Joshua Hell Fialkoff, and I really enjoyed Spider-Man 2099 number one uh, by Peter David from Marvel. All number ones this week, who knew? And speaking of that, this is contest time right now. Yeah, you know what you can win? You can win a digital copy of Spider-Man 2099 number one. All you have to do is make sure you are subscribed to this channel and in the comments, answer this question. What is the name of Spider-Man 2099's holographic assistant? I will choose one winner at random and you will get an emailed digital version of this book. And that's it. Don't forget to go to Majorspoilers.com, the comic book website where they know that you love comic books, and we do too. Go check out my podcast on there, Geek History Lesson. You can find it on iTunes and Stitcher. We take one character from pop culture every week, dissect them. And also, if you want to help support Jason Reed's comics, LootCrate.com slash Jawan. Get you 10% off. You get a shirt. You get a pop vinyl. I know there's an exclusive issue of Rocket Raccoon that's coming this month in it. Uh, hey, there you go. It's pretty cool. And uh, Go help support the show. Leave me in the comments what you thought about this week's review let me know what you want me to review in the future if there's a certain single issue a number one a number two a number three a number 13 that you want me to review let me know downstairs don't forget to like favorite and subscribe to my channel thank you all for watching i'm jason inman be seeing you Really quick time after the credits, guys. Uh, I just want to let you know very quickly that I will be at San Diego Comic-Con. Let me know in the comments if you are going to San Diego Comic-Con. And if you are, if there's a good number of you that are going to be there, I would love to do a meetup. I would love to take pictures, talk comic books. We can go to the food court, um, chat about stuff, walk around. You can help me search for Ghostbusters pop vinyls because I really want to get that complete set. I'm looking for Winston. I'm looking for Winston. Just, mm, you look for Winston and help me out. But uh, let me know down in the comments if you're going to San Diego Comic-Con. Let's, uh, let's meet up. Let's talk. And I'll announce it next week whether we're going to do a uh, thing of the thing of the thing of the thing. There you go. Enter the contest, guys, and get Spider-Man 2099. Do it. Thank you all for watching. That's it. That's all I got. Um, have you guys watched The Leftovers? It's a good show.